Bonjour mesdames et messieurs and welcome to episode 16 of my Photoshop Lightroom and Photography Tips. My name is Serge Ramelli and I am what? I am a French photographer living where? In Paris. Yes. Okay, last week I did a panel with Scott Kelby. I showed you the before and after. So this was the before the retouching. I retouched every raw file. That's every raw file that has been retouched. And that's the final result we got. So if you have not seen it, check out last week's episode. This week we are going to cheat. Yes. Because while I was in Corsica, I had a very bad weather. And I took this photo of this beach. Here is the before photo. And that photo was pretty much what it looked like. Rainy, you know, pretty gray. Anyways, and I'm going to use Lightroom for... I was actually going to throw that photo to the garbage bin. And I decided to check a few things with Lightroom 4. And here is the final result. I'm going to cheat and try to make this a very saturated, very like tropical type of photo. So let's get started and let me show you how I do this. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so here is the tutorial. So this week, as I said in the intro, I'm going to totally cheat on this photo of um, a Corsica. It was raining. And I want to, you know, I want to make this into like a sort of a sunny, very, very vibrant type of photo. So first of all, as usual, I'm going to do my um, open up the shadows and bring down the highlights. This is just to get, you know, the histogram is to get all the information uh, here in the middle. You know, now watch this. If I do my white and black, you will see the histogram is not going to go like this, like all around here. And that's very important because then that means that all your tone values are well spread all across the photo. So for this, um, I press the option key. I do the whites to the right until I reach a white point, which is something like this. And then I do the blacks to the left until I reach some black points. Okay, that's you have seen me do this over and over if you watch some of my tutorials. Now that's very important. Now check this out. This makes the photo a lot more contrasty. Now, um, I want to make this like it was um, more sunny. So I'm going to change the uh, temperature and bring it down a little bit. Uh, just very, yeah, just uh, make it a bit more blue. And then I'm going to make the, the tint go a bit right. No tint, I'm going to leave it this way. I just want to make this a little bit more blue. Okay, next I'm going to bring down um, the, um, the neutral density here. I'm going to make the exposure. I'm going to press the option key to put this on reset. This is going to, when you press the option key, this goes on reset. And I'm going to put the exposure down a little bit and just make a gradient like this. Okay, now we have more details in the sky. Okay, usually what I do when I do that, I just re verify my whites. Uh, yeah, I think then I'm going to boost my whites a little bit more. Okay, make it a bit brighter, something like this. Then I'm going to put uh, my vibrance. I'm going to go the whole way on the vibrance. That's the whole key point here to make this. Uh, yeah, I'm going to bring it down to like 90 or something to make this very shiny, uh, colorful. OK, and then I'm going to bring um, the exposure plus 40, something like this to make it a lot brighter. So now already it's looking a lot more sunny in the uh, and next to you know put even more attention on the on the, the blue sky i'm going to cheat here in this hue saturation and luminance i'm going to go for the saturation and i'm going to put um everything at minus 50 i'm going to uh, accept the greens and the blues and the aqua that i'm going to put at plus 50 uh, this is going to put the attention on the uh, is going to make the sky a lot more blue uh, which is uh, also the yellow sorry i'm going to put the yellow also at plus 50 so i'm going to boost even more the saturation and i'm going to bring it down on the reds and the purple i mean bring it down actually doesn't make such a difference what's important is to boost the yellow the green the aqua and the blue to give even more saturation just on this I could do it just by pushing saturation to the right, but I prefer to make sure that I select the right color. Now, it was actually raining that day. And if you look at this in the rain, see how noise came up. You not only have grain noise, but you also have color noise. So let me explain you on the noise reduction. You have two types of noise. You have luminance. Now, luminance is this little grain that you see here. Let me put luminance around 40 or 38 
check this out. It's going to take a while, but see how all the grains went out? No, it's not grainy anymore. Uh, I don't know if you can see it on the video, even so this is a full HD video. Now here on the mountains, you can see that there is some other type of noise. It's called the color noise. You see some little green spot, blue spot, red spots. That can happen in the dark part, and that's what color is. Now, color, I go the whole way to plus 100 whenever I see a bit of that. And check it out, it took everything out. Now, when, I t when you have such a noisy photo like I have here, when you take out the luminance at 40 and the color at 100, that's a lot of noise reduction. I usually get my sharpening around 50 or 60, not more, because then it looks muddy after that if you go too much. Okay, so now we took out the noise. And um, one thing I do is I go into camera calibration. Now, camera calibration is just a way for Lightroom to interpret your raw file. You know, give it different ways or point of view to make it simple. Let's check landscape because it's a landscape. Ooh, landscape made the sky a lot more blue. So I'm going to go for landscape. All right. So now check this out. This is uh, where we started. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I know some people uh, can press the backslash key and they can see the before and after, but it doesn't work on me. If you have a, you know, if you're just doing this tutorial at home, you can just press the bas bas backslash key. I'm sorry. And you will see the before and after. I have to go into history for the simple reason that I'm using a French keyboard with a, uh, I'm using a French keyboard with an English Lightroom. So the, I don't have a backslash key on my French keyboard. Okay, nevertheless, this is where we started and this is where we are right now. Uh, so quite a change. Now, what's very important to make it even more like if it was sunny, it's to use a brush and I'm gonna brighten up some part of the image. So for this, I'm gonna press the option key to make sure to click reset, everything is at zero. I'm just gonna boost the exposure a little bit, make sure that my feather is at 100 so that we don't see too much the, the brush stroke, that flow and density is at 100 because that's the value I like to work with. Okay, uh, now my exposure is way too much, but that's okay. I'm just trying to, I'm brushing here on the, on the spots that there is in the water, you know, and making it brighter. Now, it's way too much, so I'm gonna bring it down to, yeah, something like this, maybe 52 or, yeah, 42. It's just, you know, we'll make this a bit more shiny. So now I'm happy with that brush stroke, so I'm gonna click on new to make other brush strokes. I never mixed up my brush strokes with other brush strokes, meaning that, for example, this is way too strong, so I'm gonna back it down. Okay, until I have something that I'm happy with. I just want to make like if there was a sun, some sun spot on this, you know. Okay, then I'm going to click on new. And uh, let's make here another brush stroke. Okay, like this. Okay, let's bring it down. Okay, or bring it up like this. Okay, let's make another one here. And maybe bring it up even more. Okay. So now, new brush strokes. I'm going to make some in the sky here. Uh... You would see it's kind of weird because they, they look like very strong right now. And boy, they are very strong. Okay, because my exposure is at plus 80. Now, check this out. If I bring this down to the whole way down to 0 0.14, it just adds a little bit of drama in the sky. Okay, and I kind of like that. I'm maybe going to bring this the whole way there just to give a little bit more details here in the sky, you know. And because um, I like when you can see, you know, the, the texture of the sky. That's something I, I, I personally always go for. Okay, now that's before the brush strokes and that's after the brush strokes. Uh, it's a lot of cheating, but believe me, no one will see it once it's done. And we are trying just to do some artistic form here. Okay, uh, last but not least, I want to bring some more details in the sky. So I'm going to add a new brush. I'm going to click on reset. But this time, I'm going to go for clarity. I'm going to put the clarity the whole way to 100 to make a big brush. And all I'm doing is, is bringing clarity in the sky. It's just going to make, I don't know if you can see it on the video, but it's going to make the, you know, basically the clouds a bit sharper. Okay, that's that. And that clarity, and then I'm going to add a bit more clarity, like 31. Yeah, something like that on the top of it. So I'm basically done. Let me go back on the history. This is the before photo. And this is the after photo. So I totally cheated, but for the sake of 
beauty, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, last but not least, let's take the crop tool and I'm going to crop this a little bit because I think there's a bit too much sky. I want to have basically two thirds of ground and one third of sky just for the hell of, you know, applying the uh, rule of third. And also because I like, you know, the cinematographic, a bit more panoramic type of uh, cropping. But that's personal. Voila, that's basically it. Uh, so uh, you see, that's the power of Lightroom. You can do a lot of stuff in Lightroom. And just so you know, this photo was supposed to go straight to my garbage can, my computer garbage can. I didn't like it at first. And then I was just playing around Lightroom. I said, wow, I could do this sort of like, you know, uh, very sunny, uh, tropical beach. And well, <laughs> it was raining that day. So that's basically it. Okay, this is just my website, photosearch.com slash apps, A-P-P-S. You can just go on photosearch.com and you click on the App Store link here on the top menu. And there, if you like this type of tutorial, you've got 10 more. Uh, each one costs about $10 if you buy it from the website or $6 if you buy it on an iPhone and iPad. The difference with the $10 price is that you get the raw files right away and you get better quality video. Whereby the $6 version, you have to, an address where you have to go and fetch the raw files and you get a bit lesser quality video. But anyways, you got all the Photoshop training and all the Lightroom training. I try to make my training as simple as possible. Check it out. It helps support this podcast. Also, if you go onto this page, the podcast page, you will see there, there is all my podcast, uh, all the episodes from the start, and you can even purchase the raw files that goes with each episode. So if you want to try at home, it also helps support the podcast. But, you know, if you want to follow along with me and take the raw file, um, uh, try it out. You will see uh, it's a very good way of learning. Last but not least, if you're following this on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you can get this free weekly podcast. Okay, guys, thank you for listening and let's get back to the studio. Okay, so I hope you liked that tutorial. Uh, this week, I don't have any inspiration, especially, but I want to ask a question to you guys that are watching this podcast. Um, leave me some comments on YouTube of things you would like to know about Lightroom or Photoshop or photography in general, and uh, so I can get some ideas of tutorials that would be helpful to you guys. Okay, thank you very much for watching. And I hope I can see you next week. Bye-bye.